Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the first episode of Coffee Club this year, 2022. Um, I'm super excited to welcome to my colleagues, my awesome colleagues, uh, Paul and Khaled. Do you want to introduce yourselves? Uh, Paul, age before beauty, so you can you can go first. <laughs> we really, really make it five seconds in. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, I'm Paul. I do web and uh, Python advocacy at JetBrains, and I am clearly the higher. I think I should be called the three standard deviations because the only reason that I work at JetBrains is to make everyone else feel younger on the median. <laughs> you know, no, I, we love Paul. Yeah, we love Paul. Paul. Everyone loves Grandpa. Sure. Yeah, uh, <laughs> like a nice set of slippers. Oh, no, Paul, it's great working with you. Great working with Dolly as well. Uh, my name is Khalid. I am a .NET dev advocate uh, representing ReSharper and Writer. Uh, so, yeah, and I mostly make memes. So that's probably what I do most. So Yes, we love uh, <laughs> edits memes. And uh, I'm Dahlia. If, you, if this is your first time tuning in, I am a Java developer advocate. Um, and I work with uh, Paul and Khaled, who actually got to meet last year at uh, AWS reInvent. And we thought we should get together and talk about something we really care about. Um, so I decided that I wanted something New Year themed. And I ran this idea by, uh, uh, by Khaled and Paul. And I was like, you know what? I really... Uh, want to talk about building habits because it's the new year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the end of the year is a good time to kind of reflect on what you did during the year and what you want to start doing during the new year. Um, and I really wanted to talk about this topic and see if we can pull together all different thoughts and figure out if we can um, benefit other people from our experience and things that worked and things that didn't work. So uh, mm -hmm. I think we can get started. I see a lot of people in the chat, love seeing everyone. Hey, everyone in the chat. Yep. Um, really good seeing everyone here and happy new year to everyone. Um, so let's start with kind of defining what habits are. I know most people know what it is, but just so we Everyone is on the same uh, page. So habits are things that we do on a regular basis without really thinking about it. So, um, you know, brushing your teeth or, you know, taking a shower or whatever. Uh, but of course, one step beyond that, a lot of times we want to build habits that are um, helping us grow. Um, so, for example, uh, exercising, um, eating healthier, um, using keyboard shortcuts, uh, wink, wink, <laughs> or um, writing blogs, creating content, um, anything like that, that could help you grow as a person or grow as a developer, grow your career. Um, you can build habits to help you do that. Um, so, uh, you know, throughout the years, I've had different habits that I've tried to build and I've done so successfully with some and unsuccessfully with others. Um, so we're definitely going to share um, what that looks like. And I do want to say that uh, one of my favorite books is um, Atomic Habits. And this book really helped me uh, be more successful building habits. So I'm going to be referencing the book throughout the episode, mainly because I learned a lot from it after I um, read it um, a couple of years ago. And I'm, I've actually listened to it again. A this good website. Year. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, so I think that's, uh, kind of where habits, uh, the way that I like to think about habits, um, maybe we can start with asking ourselves the why, cause I know mm -hmm. Paul likes to start with the why, yep. um, why, why do we want to build habits? Uh, why is it important? And, uh, let's, let's start with Khaled. What do you think? Yeah, it's, uh, habits are interesting, right? And uh, for me, I think habits really start from uh, a sense of like dissatisfaction. And for me, dissatisfaction doesn't have to be an overly negative feeling, but it's just a feeling of like, maybe I could do something a little better, or maybe I don't like my current situation. So when you're trying to kind of create a list of uh, new habits, maybe it's a good idea to think about what you're dissatisfied about. Um, you know, maybe you want to make more money. Maybe you want to work on harder problems, those kind of things. So um, yeah, maybe you want to run further, right. Uh, than you currently can. So maybe those small feelings of dissatisfaction, maybe list them out and try to figure out um, 
how you can work on those things. So for me, that's kind of always the starting point uh, of why you want to start a new habit um, and trying to figure out like how to set those things up. So that, that for me is, is usually the, the focal point, you know? So, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Paul, like, what are your thoughts uh, about why uh, you should start the, new habits? The point you make about dissatisfaction, I think is, is a really good starting point because we're coming out of a time of the year. That's a time of reflection. Mm -hmm. uh, we at JetBrains have this cool arrangement where we get to have downtime at the end of December, but all our Russian colleagues <laughs> take vacation at the beginning of January. And so no one's bugging us for like what feels like three months. Mm -hmm. And every year I use this time period to rewrite the JetBrains guide. No, 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 not that. To uh, reflect. And the reflection as part of self-improvement and this is generally the time of year people set new year resolutions, which I guess, Dolly, which is what prompted you to schedule this for the coffee club. And so I think that I think that's a good point. A, you kind of during the year, gather up some feelings about yourself mm -hmm. and want to make a change. And habits are one of the tools for making a change. Would you agree? Is that kind of restating what you were saying? Yeah. And I, I think it's important too. like, um, you know, dissatisfaction is kind of the foundation to build a good habit off of. Um, if you're not dissatisfied with something, like sure. don't, don't change it. It's not broken. Right. So maybe you already have good habits. There's no reason to kind of uh, break those good habits, but maybe you want to break some bad habits sure. and stuff like that. So. You know what habit that I promised myself this bleeping holiday season I would fix? <laughs> I want to use my pinky for the delete key. I'm a great typist, but I don't <laughs> know why after all these years. Uh, Dolly, do you have a, a position on uh, Khalid's point about the satisfaction? I, I thought you were going to ask if I have a position for my delete key because I never use my <laughs> pinky. Do people, uh, I guess that's a question for the audience. Do y'all use a pinky for the delete key? I just like look at the keyboard. They're all going to say, of course we do, you monsters. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, I think, so I think the dissatisfaction perspective is a really good one for like, um, kind of pushing you to figure out what do you want to do for, from, uh, like maybe fixing something that, um, mm -hmm. you want, you have. And I, I like to see it from that perspective. And I also like to see it from the other perspective of who do I want to be? So even mm -hmm. if I'm already in a good state, like, Mm -hmm. Who do I want to be moving forward? And a lot of times, like, I, I think, well, I want to be a more uh, healthy person. So that's kind of what prompts the, well, I want to eat healthier. I want to exercise. I want to do all these things. Or I want to be a more effective programmer or a better developer or whatever it is. And a lot of times I start from what I want to be. And then build on top of that from, okay, what kind of habits would help me become that while, you know, using the keyboard more or, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. learning more about tech or uh, having a regular cadence of learning new technology or mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So um, I like both perspective on asking yourself, what are you dissatisfied with or what do you want to be more of? And I think that's a really uh a uh, good way to figure out what kind of habits will help you become that person that you want to be. Mm -hmm. We have a comment from the audience about a Dahlia habit. Hey, Mike Cullerton, good to see you. And he said, I love Dahlia. She just said, y'all, she's <laughs> localizing this coffee chat for me, the redneck from the wrong part of Florida. So I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to not use you guys but then i say y'all so and it, just is your choice, huh? it comes out not the most natural thing coming out of my mouth because i'm not a native speaker so it's just always like i always get comments about it i'm like y'all you know the the more see this is perfect because it's a habit the more you say it the more natural feel coming out yes. of your mouth right you know? so. such a good point <laughs> I, that's such a good point yeah it was a habit to use you guys and i had to just stop myself every time and say y'all mm -hmm. even if it doesn't feel right is there um, a duolingo course for redneck <laughs> 
Um, so yeah. maybe this is a good time to ask the audience since uh, we have a, a, a active audience here. Um, why do you typically form new habits? Is it more out of dissatisfaction or you want to, um, you know, do something better or grow or what, what is it that you sit down and decide I want to build this habit for, or maybe you're hearing everyone like around you say, doing something healthy or, you know, whatever it is. And you want to uh, do more of that. And I see also in the comments, um, hope everyone ate well and stayed hydrated. I see a lot of people <laughs> in my Twitter feed, uh, reminding me to get more water. And I appreciate that because I do not drink enough water during the day. So appreciate that. I, I think my wife said something where she said, I don't think this is true because it sounds absurd, but she said, take your body weight and half it. And that's how many ounces you should be drinking of water every day. That sounds like a lot, right? Yes. I mean, I'm a big guy, so it sounds like a lot to me. <laughs> it's also recursive because water gains weight. And so... Yeah. Oh man. Never ends. Just keep drinking yeah. water. Just hook me up to a fire hose. But <laughs> you know, it's funny. I just, I just typed in the chat and I was very self-conscious about my pinkies. So thanks Paul. You've, you've given me, uh, you know, another thing to hate yourself about. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to, now I have to think about my pinky all the time. So. <laughs> And yeah. I see folks in the chat saying the satisfaction, uh, satisfaction is a common yeah. uh, reason to start new habits. Um, and I see that as, as definitely effective. Um, okay, cool. So maybe we can start kind of talking about some of the habits that we've built, examples of habits we've built. And um, maybe folks in the chat can give us some of their examples of how they've built good habits mm -hmm. um, throughout the years. Um, let's start with... Paul, because sure. Paul is a marathon runner, and I'm always uh, really in awe of what you can do, Paul. So I'm kind of hoping that I can learn uh, some things from you that can help me kind of go up to uh, a level where running is not a chore anymore. <laughs> Sure. And that's an interesting example to map onto habits because uh, I get that a lot. Oh, I'm in awe. And I confess, I love to hear, Pauly loves to hear that. <laughs> Pauly thrives <laughs> on hearing that. But the truth is, just like people talking to us about DevRel, it's a lot more boring on the inside. It isn't all just standing out on the at the keynote. Mm -hmm. uh, something like so, something like running a marathon or equally hard teaching yourself async uh, is nothing more than just getting up and doing it. And uh, running a marathon, training for a marathon is just, okay, I ran a mile and I threw up. All right. Tomorrow I'll run a mile and I won't throw up. And then the next day I'll do. And then the next day I'll do. And then it is a very boring series of micro achievements that add up when you stretch out enough time, a habit can have a profound impact by just doing tiny acts of simplicity, which brings up kind of the point of really it's just about most things in life are just about showing up. And so one of the things we talked about in prep on this, uh, I had a great example for a first habit. When I was a kid, my dad said, when you walk into the house, take your keys and your wallet out of your pocket and put them in the same place every time so that you won't constantly run around and say, where are my keys? They're in their place. And I still do that to this day. Just moved in, downsized, moved into a new house picked a spot to put my keys and that is now forevermore the place where my keys will be. Mm -hmm. So this idea of taking habits and um, just turning them into doing small things really does have bigger impacts. There are some other things I do beyond that related to OmniFocus and Pomodoro for time boxing, things like that. Kind of suck at it. And I, it's like pinky. I hate myself <laughs> when I am my best. Me is when I'm living by it. And when I'm my worst, me is when I'm like, Oh my God, I've got 12 pie charm getting started videos to do. <laughs> screw the system. I'm going off road and breaking all my habits. And then I, I hate myself. 
can you explain a little bit about uh, the two uh, tools that you mentioned? Because mm -hmm. I'm not familiar with them. Sure, sure. I don't want to be a tool zealot. <laughs> Our industry <laughs> has a wee bit of zealotry. So I don't want to pitch into that too much. <laughs> But OmniFocus is kind of a higher end implementation of the getting things done methodology. Getting things done, ironically, is about a moleskin notepad, not about an electronic tool. Uh, but OmniFocus is a Mac app, which has been around forever and ever and is refined into oblivion. And its primary idea, this is a big thing for me on the topic of habits. Have an outboard brain, a trusted system that can go on autopilot and you don't have to think about it. And once you develop the habits to do that system, it can liberate your brain to be so relaxed. And so many of these habits, like the coffee chat folks, they do a good job talking about, you know, using IDEs and tools and things that they like and stuff like that. Well, all of those little IDE tips to me are really ways to let your outboard brain do the work for you so you can focus on the important stuff. Let your IDE be your janitor. Clean up on aisle six. And so these other things like OmniFocus or Pomodoro or whatever, when they become a habit, they go on autopilot. You don't have to think about it. I'll stop yeah. there. You know, one of the things you said is interesting, and uh, this is kind of serendipitous. My wife had actually bought me the same book that Dolly is reading, Atomic Habits. <laughs> so just... Just the universe was like, hey, you need to you need to be on this chat with Dahlia and Paul and talk about this. But one of the interesting things, um, the author was talking about the difference between regular people and high performing people. And uh, the coach he was talking to said, um, like professionals and like people at the top of their industry, they get bored too. They have the same problems regular people have. Uh, but one of the things that differentiates high performing individuals from people who maybe don't get to that level is that they just show up, right? Like, mm. yes, they get bored. They have those same feelings, but they figure out a way to show up. And that's kind of what you were saying, Paul, like uh, getting into your habit of running yeah, it's not going to feel good every time you do it, but you you put in the effort to just show up and be there and do the things that you need to do. And I, that, I think you know, that an interesting, interesting point on that is it means you have agency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I like the uh, point about the IDE thing to kind of tie it to um, habits because the idea from habits is that you're – kind of removing the cognitive load. And I know someone in the chat mentioned this, like you're freeing up your cognitive load so that you can focus on that load on like actually writing the app, really not well. like writing your getters and your setters and your, what you know, <laughs> whatever's uh, from the .NET and the Python person here. Um, but like, um, like, you know, so that you're not focusing on, um, you know, with the syntax, but you're mm -hmm. more focusing on what the app is doing and it frees you up to make more progress mm -hmm. and like, you know, write better algorithms or whatever it is. Um, so, so the idea isn't to just make something boring. It's that you're removing that cognitive load from something you already have to do, but you're being more effective with it. So mm -hmm. I, I really like that point. Well, um, let me ask you a follow up on that. Um, we're in the what and how. It's not a free lunch. You got to stop what you're doing and spend time to learn that shortcut until it becomes automatic. Mm -hmm. And most of the time people are like, no, I've got to go finish this code block. How do you, Dahlia, do that cost benefit analysis? Do you like squirrel away all of your your backlog of learning into on Saturday morning, I'll do my learning or do you do it as you go? You know, I've tried different methods. So I've tried dedicating time on Fridays where I um, pick up a few shortcuts and like uh, make sure that I learn them. There is a shortcut um, um, cheat 
I have it even oh, yeah. printed uh, for Intelligent Idea where I would say like, hey, I'll pick out like, you know, five shortcuts and I will practice them on Friday and I will try those out. And I did that for like a couple of weeks, but then I never actually did it more. And then I tried a different method, which is um, how about every time I do something in the IDE, if I'm doing it multiple times and there's a shortcut for it, I'm going to force myself to do that shortcut. That was a little bit more effective because I was motivated to try the shortcuts. Mm -hmm. And I think that was more of like uh, what I needed to do. So a lot of times I, I do want to uh, tie in to the Atomic Habits book here because he breaks it up into four things. And the first thing is actually having a cue, which is like, when this happens, I'm going to do this habit. And I feel like choosing the right, if this happens, I'm going to do this habit mm. is really important. So there's two ways to do this. There is having an implementation intention, which is like, say, at this time, which is what I did on Friday at two o'clock, I'm going to practice five shortcuts. So that's yeah. one way of doing it. That didn't work as well for me because I kind of ignored the the ignored the reminders because I was in the middle of something else I was doing. The other way is to do uh, stacking. So come up with something where you're already doing something and then you kind of stack it in the middle. So kind of think mm -hmm. of a stack there. And I think that worked a lot better for me where I was saying every time I refactor, I'm going to use the shift F6 key or, you mm -hmm. know, every time I'm going to uh, search for something, I'm going to use this shortcut or this shortcut. So that worked better for me. And mm -hmm. I'm really curious about the audience. If you're using um, keyboard shortcuts for your IDE, what worked for you to learn new shortcuts? Did you intentionally sit down and try to do it during a certain time period or did you say hey every time i do this i'm gonna you know go ahead and use a shortcut and i know Khaled, you talked a little bit about keep promoter x um, <laughs> a yeah, little drill a, sergeant in your life there there is a very good plugin in the intellij marketplace which is keep promoter uh and it will I'll type basically it. I'll type it in the chat yeah any any time you actually run an action without using the keyboard shortcut i believe it like brings up a message and says hey you know you could use this as a, a keyboard shortcut instead and maybe that that notification can help you learn those keyboard shortcuts it's funny though recently one of our devs even said like intellij does this thing that says hey, you seem to be debugging your application lot and stepping through. How about using smart breakpoints? And sometimes you're just in the thick of it and you're like, <laughs> I know I could stuff. do better. I know I could form a new habit, yeah. but like life kind of gets in the way. Uh, so I thought that was kind of funny. It's like, yes, even our devs sometimes forego the niceties of our tools just to get through something. So uh, I thought that was funny. So yeah. yeah. Oh, go ahead, Dahlia. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, I, you know, it's it's funny uh, you're talking about stacking and stuff. And um, ever since I kind of became a developer advocate, um, I think you can, uh, you can do things to help yourself uh, get into kind of a rhythm or in a habit. Uh, one of the things I like to do is to put things on my calendar for specific days. So if I want something to happen on a specific day, I might put that on a calendar. Um, but I've also learned some things that make um, it a lot easier to hit those milestones. So to make things just a lot easier, think about the goal. So for me personally, I like to blog a lot and I do. Uh, I usually put out, I used to put out two blog posts a week, but reduce it back down to one. Um, but I found my goal was actually, I want to release a blog post every week and it's a creative process and creativity can kind of hit you whenever, uh, it hits you. Right. Uh, so instead of trying to write a blog post every week, I just started writing blog posts whenever they would hit me and then I would schedule them to be released ah. every week. So I've created a backlog. So I still feel good about forming this habit of writing, but I don't feel pressured to perform on the day that I want to release content. I think creating that kind of 
uh, backlog was really helpful for me. That's personally. a really good tip because when you're doing it and you're not inspired, it is. Yeah, it just feels like a chore. You yeah. don't want that. I, I see one of Dolly's notes is uh, make it easy, right? So sometimes it's just about maybe tweaking your goal a little bit um, and trying to understand what that goal is. And that's been really helpful for me. Uh, another thing that's been super helpful is uh, I, I tweet a lot of tips for the .NET community, uh, and they're pretty popular. Um, and I found just scheduling those to be released every day has helped a lot. So I don't have to remember to get on Twitter and uh, push those tweets out. They just are automated. And again, that, that backlog process of just creating this value for yourself you can really do that at any time, but then kind of release it uh, to meet your own goals and stuff like that. So uh, I guess the moral of the story is um, evaluate your goals and think about the different ways that you can form habits to reach those goals. Like there isn't just one straight and narrow path to get mm -hmm. there. So, Dolly, yeah. does uh, Atomic Habits talk about this? The what yeah, the they, they do. Uh, he does. And uh, like, it's a really good point about not focusing on your goals and more focusing on your systems. So mm -hmm. at the beginning of yeah. the book, like he just talks about, hey, uh, the people that don't uh, achieve their goals and the people that achieve their goals, they both have something in common. They both have the same goals. <laughs> the difference between the two is that they actually have systems in place mm -hmm. to achieve their goals. So don't get so caught up on like setting a goal, which I've done before. I'm like, I'm going to run a 5K. Yep. And then, you know, you just keep getting disheartened because you're not reaching that goal. Or once you reach that goal, you're like, well, I'm done running, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is. Um, so he talks about really focusing on your systems and maybe your your goals can be a little bit broader, which is a really good point that Khaled brought up. It's more of like, I want to be a healthier person or I want to mm -hmm. be a writer. Like outcomes. I want to be yeah. the kind of person that write blogs. Uh, that's uh, something I've struggled with because I just don't really have the motivation to uh, write. But yeah. I know it's something that would be really good for my career and something that is something... I really want to build up. And I know a lot of people out there want to write and share their knowledge more. But the question is, what system have you set in place to start being a writer, to hey, do it more regularly? Can I hijack your discussion about the yeah. Habits to bring up another book? Because X Factor yes. in the chat reminded me about, um, he brought up seven daily habits of highly effective people. Yes. And that was in my notes to talk about in the beginning. Um, when I was, uh, it, I'll, I'll go off on a little bit of riff and come back and wind it back up with reinforcing what you just said. Um, when I was younger, of all things, I was a Navy officer and I briefly considered putting on my old Navy hat during this coffee chat. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and then, and when I have my own company, I read the book, Seven Daily Habits of Highly Effective People. It's one of those self-helpy kinds of books where the author turns it into an industry of conferences and speaking tours and stuff like that. But it's actually very legit. One of the points made in there really uh, reinforces what you just said. The difference between production capacity and production. It's the golden goose versus the golden eggs. And a lot of times you frame this in terms of goals like I'd like to run a marathon. Well, that's the golden egg. When what you really need, Dolly, is what you were just saying from Atomic Habits, the systems and things, a.k.a. habits, that you embed into your life that produce the ability to do that or some other thing or future things after that. and. That really intrigues me. Maybe X Factor can talk about it from their experience, but the ability to like take on these habits, change your production capacity and think I can kick ass at anything I want is a magnificent feeling. I love that. I love that because I'm actually in the middle of reading uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People uh, or listening to it, which oh, brings yeah. up a, a, one of the habits that I've built up through the years, which is listening to books. I had 
the hardest time reading, sitting down, reading a book from mm. uh, start to finish. I would just never finish a book. And then I started listening to books and making it a habit. Um, and that not only did it help me kind of build the actual habit, but it also really helped me grow um, my skills in different areas. So I, you know, I listened to um, fiction, which is also improving my uh, English skills and like vocabulary, all that stuff. But I'm also listening to books like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People or Atomic Habits or Crucial Conversations or any of those books that have a lot of really great lessons that I would have mm -hmm. missed out on if I didn't build this habit of listening to books. Um, and I do want to uh, touch on uh, how to actually build a habit and what worked for me. Mm. So for example, for listening to books, um, there was, so, so, the, so speaking of, so it's a really good tie. So for atomic habits, he talks about four things that you need to do for each habit to successfully do it. Uh, one is make it obvious. Two is make it attractive. Three, make it easy and four, make it satisfying. So those are really important for aspects and he dives into how to do it um, a lot. And a lot of times, you know, you listen to books and you never implement it, but I actually ended up implementing a lot of these and it ended up helping me with uh, listening to books or uh, even uh, working out. So making it easy um, is the most important thing at the beginning, which is setting a plan in place that you're going to fall you're going to actually implement. So I know um, someone in the chat, Ahmed Aziz, was talking about how uh, for him, it worked out to say, I'm going to do this habit at this time on this date. Got it. And that works well um, for certain habits. And then other habits that uh, I've tried where I do it using stacking worked really well for me. So for example, I said, every time I do a chore, like, you know, uh, you know, doing the laundry or uh, taking a drive or traveling or whatever, I'm going to play uh, one of my books that I'm listening to. And I've started doing that. And uh, to a certain point where every time I start a laundry, uh, laundry and I don't have headphones on that I'm listening to something, I'm like, something's missing. Like I, I should be doing something there else. There you go. It's a so <laughs> habit stacking really worked well for me um, for the make it obvious. The other thing that really worked well for me was um, I would have a really hard time scheduling in my workouts. And I, that's how I ended up uh, never sticking to working out at the end. Like, I was like, okay, Dahlia, you're going to need to make sure that this is as obvious as you can. So I said, all right, I'm going to um, put out my clothes in the morning. And once I get out of bed, I'm putting on those workout clothes. Like there's no getting out of it. This is going to happen <laughs> yep. no matter what. And I'm going to work out in the morning no matter what happens. And sometimes it's about finding a time where n n there's no distractions and it's going to be the most likely to happen. Because if you're, you know, your schedule is chaotic and, you know, eh, like the mornings are the only time you're guaranteed to do that one thing, then that's what you've got to do. I never imagined myself being one of those people that wake up and work out. I, I always looked at them in the morning and I'm like, good for you. <laughs> but it actually <laughs> really worked. The <laughs> so, workout's the easy part. Putting on the damn workout clothes yes. is like an yes. antidote. Well, yes. Committing I, to that. Oh, go I, ahead. Well, can I ask you something? It's it's kind of the, the flip side, right? So good habits stack on each other and you get more done. Um, how do you deal with the fact that like maybe you're starting a habit like waking up in the morning and exercising or – um, you know, other things. Um, but maybe you miss, maybe you miss one thing that you scheduled. How do you keep yourself from spiraling out and like getting back on the bandwagon? Maybe you need a habit factory. <laughs> no, this is such a good point because I've made the mistake of saying, Hey, like, I ate a burrito today. I guess I'll eat sushi tomorrow. Like, you know, you you messed up once and you're like, well, might as well just keep messing up. Yeah. Um, and actually, the, uh, the, the book talks about this, about how um, your habits are a vote for who you want to be. It's, mm. And you, the, the, the vote doesn't need to be unanimous. It just needs to be the majority. 
So you, every time you're make, doing a habit, you're putting a vote to the kind of person you want to be. So if you, if you want to be the kind of person that uh, works out regularly, if you wake up with your workout clothes on, you're putting a vote into that person. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't and you skip a workout, you're taking that away, but it's okay. It, you're mm -hmm. still in the majority. You're still going there. The other thing he really talks about, and I really appreciate, is he talks about not missing twice. And mm -hmm. I have that voice in my head every time. It's like, <laughs> all right, I went out. I actually did this like two days ago. I went out with um, my husband and my sister, and we went and ate sushi, and we got a sushi buffet, and I knew I shouldn't have done it. But I was <laughs> like, you know what? It's okay. Like the Sushi boat went. To... You and I talked about this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um. Yep. Yep. Okay. But the next day, I was like, "No, I'm not gonna do that again. I'm gonna go back <laughs> on the on, on. I'm gonna go back to being a healthy person. I'm gonna eat healthier, and we're gonna keep going. It's okay if you mess up once. Like, don't make it. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I might as well messed up. Like, let's have that burrito. <laughs> and now I'm craving a burrito. So let's order the sushi <laughs> boat. With uh, three one sushi pieces, sushi both for one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kelly, there's a, a comment from yeah. Ahmed Aziz, uh, the most the, the last one. And I wonder if you do that. Do you kind of optimize your time by taking two things and putting them in the same slot? Um, I try not to because I'm notoriously bad at multitasking, like mm. my brain, uh, my brain, like. I appreciate Dahlia being able to listen to audiobooks. Audiobooks have always been a challenge for me because I either get too involved with the audiobook or whatever I'm doing kind of trumps my brain's ability to absorb what I'm listening to. So I end up having to go back. So for me, if you're going to stack things, they definitely should be one should be autopilot and one should be the really the thing that gives Good point. you value. Good point. Um, like a good example of this is like I walk my dogs all the time. Like I could have had like both my kidneys removed and my leg <laughs> amputated and be like, hey, guess guess what you should do today? Maybe you should walk us. You know, like <laughs> they, they are relentless. Hey, so. who serves whom in this relationship? <laughs> <laughs> so I do find like those are things I have to do. Like I have to walk mm. my dog. So those are good times to maybe listen to a podcast or – uh, just maybe unwind because mm. I think a lot of us maybe sometimes get a little involved in what we're doing and it's better to take a step back and yep. kind of unwind and relax a little bit. So you can kind of come back uh, and maybe this is a good part of like forming a habit. Um, it matters how you form the habit. Uh, if you're trying to become the world's strongest man overnight, you know, you're going to end up hurting yourself. So uh, maybe having those breaks and those moments where you can relax and recharge so you can come back and keep forming those good habits uh, is a good thing. And for me, I found that my dogs and having to walk my dogs has really been helpful for that. So. Yeah, I, I really want to piggyback off that because I also got this question uh, in the chat saying, how do you listen to books while programming? And the answer is I don't. Mm -hmm. I only multitask if I can do one thing on autopilot. Yes. So, for example, like when I say I'm doing the laundry, like I can do the laundry, like I can fold it on autopilot. That's why I can do it. Or when I'm running. Um, I can listen to audiobooks because sure. I'm just running. I'm not doing anything else or I'm taking a walk or driving or whatever. If, mm -hmm. if whatever I'm doing needs any cognitive Indeed. energy, I don't do it with what I'm doing. I don't even listen to music that has lyrics when I'm programming. Yep. So, yeah. so the idea is you want to give each habit uh, a chance to build um, in, a, in a productive or effective mm -hmm. way. Um, because mm -hmm. you don't want to be listening to an audiobook and not really paying attention what, to what they're saying either. For well, one but, of them, you're not present. Exactly. So I, I like to stack it, but also stack it in a way where I've already built a habit and it's already on autopilot. Yep. So I'm just stacking it on top of that. But if it's not working for you, don't do it. Maybe so, some people, it works better to sit down and actually read a book. Um, I know Alex was saying like he falls asleep 
reading, uh, listening to audiobooks. My mentor, Kevin, also does that. So he actually has to sit down and read a book. So find out what works for you and try different things and see how you can be effective. It's a, it's a problem to solve because you're trying to figure out what is really working out for your brain and then do that over and over until you build that habit. It's going to take, um, you know, some people say it takes a month to build habits. It's mm -hmm. actually about how often you do the habit more than the time that mm -hmm. passed. So the more you do it, the easier it's going to get. Um, I, I love the questions in the, the, the chat. And I do want to, uh, touch on other, the other points because we talked about making it obvious, um, making it attractive is a really good point too. surrounding yourself with other people that want to do that habit. For example, Paul started this, um, workout club at, uh, jet brains where we just sit down and we, uh, talk about our progress. I like posting, you know, we all love posting to other people that are also trying to, you know, work out and stuff saying, Hey, I accomplished this. Um, and it feels really good when you're able to see your progress. If you're reading, like keeping track of all the books that you've read or just kind of having a system where you can see the progress you've been making, or if you have a printout of all the shortcuts that you want to learn, you know, scratching out the shortcuts that you've already learned, like some kind of system of reward where you see that it's really attractive. Um, and on the flip side of that, if you have bad habits, making those unattractive, that's another point because we were talking about good habits, but also breaking bad habits sure. can be on the flip side of that, you know, making sure that you don't have um, chocolate on the counter, which I've done multiple times, <laughs> putting away that chocolate so that it's really hard to remember that you have chocolate and I've actually forgotten it enough that it expired and I, then I don't have to worry about it anymore. But making your bad habits unattractive is also a good point. Um, making it easy is super duper important. Um, like if you, a lot of times like, we're really ambitious with our goals. Like I'm going to wake up and I'm going to drive to the gym and I'm going to do all this stuff. If it's very unlikely, you're going to, you know, go to a gym that's 30 minutes away, make it easy and maybe go to not as nice of a gym, like five minutes away. Um, or like if it's really hard for you to do like certain habit and you're just not really doing it, you can notice that you're not doing it. Try to make it easy for yourself. Like mm -hmm. that is, that is one of the most important things that you could do for yourself so you can be motivated to start that habit. Sure. And then, and then also the last step is making it satisfying. And that is really important as well. Like making sure that you feel good after that habit. Sometimes I reward myself like, Hey, I ran this much, um, today. Uh, maybe I can have a roll of sushi instead of a buffet. <laughs> 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 but not go over my calories. So I'm still kind of staying with the same goal of staying healthy, but I'm rewarding myself in a way that's also like I look forward to, or I'm going to buy new running shoes or, you know, I'm going to reward myself in some way um, that says to my brain, like, Hey, you're not just doing it for nothing. Like you're going to get something good or uh, you're going to really look forward to this thing. Or, or if you have a habit of watching too much TV saying, you know, after I've run this much, then I'll watch TV or mm -hmm. something or play that favorite video game or whatever it is. So Kelly, those are I have a follow up on this, but yes. I, think, I think you're in line first. So I'll let you go first. Oh, I was just going to invite you folks to my cookie eating club. Uh, <laughs> so maybe just let me know after the show. Just let me know. What are these like maybe... tofu seaweed cookies or something? No, no, it's, it's the best cookies. It has chocolate peanut butter you're within driving distance of me i could get <laughs> <laughs> no go ahead paul yeah ask ask your question go ahead. um i was gonna add a on the third hand to your on the one and on the other hand about um about forming habits and you know you talked about avoiding failures as well as enhancing successes and then i'll give a third hand related to what you said about our running club or our workout club is some of the posts that we put in there are like, yeah, I was going to go run, but I decided to go have a beer and sit on the sofa instead. And we're all like, that's all right. Big deal. You know, good for you. Get at it tomorrow. And there's two aspects to it, which is um, kind of being tolerant of hiccups. But the other, which is uh, it can really help being around others. Mm hmm. 
especially others if they're like the jet brains advocacy team which is a salty mouth <laughs> <laughs> hilarious group of people who do not take themselves seriously yeah i completely agree surrounding yourself with other people that um are encouraging like paul you're always like in there saying hey it's okay or you're celebrating with us whenever we have any any wins or whatever it is like having those kind of folks around or finding those kinds of folks where you're all trying to build habits together similar to what we're doing right now we're just all mm -hmm. kind of trying to build better habits and surrounding ourselves with other people that want to build better habits i think that can be a really nice motivation um so that you can keep doing it because if everyone around you is um for example if everyone around you is eating sushi every day and going to sushi buffets <laughs> i'm not going to be able to resist this i i need to drop the sushi metaphor but it's it's something that i i crave and it's my weak point um uh, but anyways like surrounding yourself with good people and uh people that encourage you and are tolerant when you um have those fall throughs that, that are bound to happen i think can be such a strong motivation mm -hmm. you know it, i guess a question for you folks right like uh when you're trying to form a new habit um like paul and i are on duolingo we're trying to learn new languages what what language are you trying to learn paul i'm not saying what come on it's man. the language i should have known 20 oh. years ago when i got married ah uh, french yeah no, you it, have not. Is it French? <laughs> <laughs> Paul's wife is French. So <laughs> the fact that it years. took 20 years for him to learn French should be encouragement for us all. That yes, it's never too late. Sucks. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> ignorance is bliss. Love. When she's yelling at you and saying terrible things at you, you in French, you're just, you don't, you don't. I don't have the decryption what key. Yeah. What'd you say? I don't have the decryption key. Oh, yeah, that's good. But by the way, what was yeah. that emoji you just put in there? Is that a steak? Oh, that's sushi. I put sushi? a bunch of sushi. Oh. So if anybody's in chat, please put the sushi emoji in. Right. Oh, uh, no. But uh, what, what was I going to say? Duolingo and probably gamification. Yeah, like uh, with Duolingo, there's a sense of gamification and uh, gamification it works. works um, but I do also find myself sometimes the gamification starts to become the goal like you do things to keep the streak alive but it, maybe you're not totally actually agree. advancing you're not progressing totally right so for you folks like how do you how do you be mindful that when you're trying to form a good habit you don't stop making progress like what are what's your thought process there I love that everyone's busy putting the sushi emoji. Like, <laughs> and now I'm gonna have to actually uh, break I'm the hungry. habit. <laughs> Dolly, um, my, my gain calories just reading yes, that, so be careful. Y'all are being the opposite of the That's group right. that I need to be around. Bad audience. <laughs> I love this question. Any luck with reward systems, and how can you use them to build habits? Ah, That's a great wow. question, and ties into that last point of making it satisfying. Um, that has worked well for me because a lot of times um, I tend to like uh, watch TV uh, too much. So what I've said, I said uh, what I've said to myself is, if I walk on the treadmill, I get to watch TV then. Um, so I'm looking forward to the treadmill because I get to watch TV or um, like reserve my favorite songs for when I'm uh, watching. Uh, for, for when I'm working out or um, mm -hmm. if I listen to this book, I, you know, do this. Like, I, I feel like it's important to reward yourself when you have good habits. Otherwise, after a while, you're like, why am I doing this? Like, mm -hmm. you don't always have to have a reward, but it is nice to just keep kind of encouraging yourself um, to say, you'll get this if you do that. Um, and, it, and uh, I like that the book, the Atomic Habits book talks a lot about kind of what our natural brains tend to go towards ah, kind of rewards and stuff and ties that into how you can put that to your advantage. Sure. Um, and you can turn your brain into something, uh, you can take advantage of the fact that your brain is looking forward to that reward. It's Let the compiler well help me. you, right? 
exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, any any other questions? Or um, I know we're coming up to the end of the hour, and I love uh, all the participation we've seen in the chat. We've got really good questions um, from the audience. I also want to hear if. If you've had success building habits, what are some of your methods that you've used, things that really worked for you, or things that you've struggled with? Some in, some of the common pitfalls um, include, you know, like breaking the habit one day and then it just goes downhill from there. Mm -hmm. um, and and my my biggest thing is like don't miss twice. Um, ah, like, like that's if a good you, mantra. It, it, it is a great one, and I, I definitely uh, got it from the Atomic Habits book because he talks about how you shouldn't just use that first failure as, okay, I'm done. It's more of like, hey, just make sure the next time that you get the opportunity to do the habit, you actually do it. Don't miss twice. Mm -hmm. um, some other things that you've struggled with, Khaled or Paul, with building habits uh, that you'd like to uh, share with us? Yeah, I mean, I guess do late. I've been trying to learn Japanese for a while. I think I'm getting close to a thousand day streak at this Dang. point. But th this is kind of what I was alluding to. Like the gamification sometimes kind of becomes the goal. And I've actually taken a step back and I'm trying to be more mindful about why I'm using the app and why I'm trying to move forward. So I'm making it more of a purpose rather than just trying to keep the streak alive to make sure that I'm doing newer lessons rather than just kind of checking the box off. So uh, I think uh, both of you during this talk said, um, you know, it's about making sure that you're making progress and forming a habit correctly rather than just kind of going through the motion. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the struggle always with forming new habits is potentially falling back into forgetting why you're doing it and perfectly uh, said. progress perfectly going said. right so those those have been the struggle the plateaus right yes i love that because um the, the whole idea was you know if you get one percent better every day like by the end of the year you're gonna see mm -hmm. this like really big progress but it's hard to see it when it's this small um mm -hmm. so always reminding yourself that Hey, if I'm getting 1% better, like that is awesome progress. And at the end, it will be adding up. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's that's a reminder for us all to every time you feel disheartened. And, uh, you know, you touched on this Khaled, earlier, like um, it's important to remember that you're you're not just one like that one time that you're motivated to do it. That's actually not the important day that you're doing the habit. It's the day where you don't feel like doing the habit and you do it anyways. Mm -hmm. Like that is the important day. And that's what's going to determine whether or not you get that 1% improvement on a daily basis. Yep. And I'll, I, be, yeah. I'll do a follow up first. I'll do a follow up on the Duolingo in Japanese. Seriously. It's tough. I've got total imposter syndrome now. <laughs> it's tough. But in, in fact, in the French course, yeah. there's a question that you get asked. Uh, tu veux parler japonais? Tu dois étudier tous les jours. <laughs> if you want to speak Japanese, you got to work every day. There's an actual <laughs> question in the French course about Japanese. Uh, it, Japanese is definitely tough. I'd love to uh, be better at it. But again, maybe... Uh, sorry to 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 hijack this, but like for me, I've been starting to think more about, you know, Duolingo is good and I like it, but maybe I should take this idea of forming a new habit of learning a new language and thinking about different ways to achieve that goal. Like mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. I should take college level courses or maybe I should hop online and try to talk to people in Japanese, that kind of thing. So um kind of always reevaluating how you can get to the thing you want sure. rather than staying. Yes, on a because, course. because the Duolingo streak isn't the goal. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Which it kind of comes back to your point about false goals. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I guess I'll close out on uh, maybe zooming way out in doing something that kind of matches what was said in the chat. Uh, for me, what interests me at this late stage of my life, it's something 
I learned when I was growing up during the first Roosevelt administration. Um, I want to do things. I want to be able to do things. I want to accomplish things. And when I think about this, and I think about just exactly what Kali was saying about the true goal, not the false goal. I, I do kind of that Amazon thing where you write the press release before you start the project. And I think about the future state and then I work it backwards. Mm -hmm. And I try to imagine this future state that is so awesome. And that version of me is a badass. And it's like this magnet pulling me because I really want to get there. And I'm not eating that chocolate because I'm some Puritan, you know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm skipping that because the outcome is so much better than that piece of chocolate. Mm -hmm. And you've got to have something sitting out there that is so enticing and so rewarding. And you'll be so proud of yourself to get there that it will just naturally pull you there. And then habits are the way to let it pull you there. I love You're making that. a commitment to be that badass. I love that. And that actually ties really well to Kadar's point about I had more positive results mm -hmm. after I stopped feeling guilty about breaking the habit, like flipping that into a positive, like you're yeah. looking forward to the kind of person you're going to be you're and you're moving towards that goal. It's not yep. like you're shaming yourself into like exercising more because it, whenever it's like associated with like a uh, crap feeling, Oh God, I have to That's do this, right. which sometimes you're going to have to, but like more of like, Hey, I'm going to feel better afterwards. Mm -hmm. My cognitive ability is going to be better. I'm going to feel great. I'm not going to get tired as easy. I'm going to program better all the stuff. Um, that said, I feel like that, having that positive outlook is a lot nicer motivating motivator than saying, Hey, like I really sure. have to do this. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah. yeah. Great. So, oh, go um, ahead. Well, I was going to say on that note, I think, uh, I'm, I'm glad you invited us Dahlia. I think this yeah. was fun. It's good to talk to the Java community and tell them to move over to .NET. I think that's You're really half right on that. And then maybe Python as a step on the way to Python. You may. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was great talking to both of you. I, I yeah. appreciate the uh, invite. So thank you. Yes. Yes. I loved talking about habits. I loved having all the different inputs from folks in the chat. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, I hope that this episode will help you uh, build better habits and hopefully stick to them. Um, definitely share with us, like if you, if this was motivational at all to start a new habit, let us know. And what some, what are some methods that worked for you and what didn't work so well? So we can learn too, because we're constantly picking up good habits and dropping bad habits as well. Um, so thank you so much, Paul, for joining me. Um, it was great insight and Khaled, always a pleasure talking with you and thank hearing you. all the insights that you have. Both of you are awesome. Thank you for uh, accepting my invite and thanks to the audience for uh, listening in and participating. I do want to mention that next episode is uh, scheduled for February 9th. So coffee club uh, episode seven is going to be um, February 9th and it's going to be around networking. We're still talking about what topic it's going to be. Um, I actually have a really special guest that I'm super looking forward to inviting, um, which is Cassidy Williams. So I'm really looking forward to chatting with her next month about networking. Um, send me any of the questions that you have ahead of time, if you have any, um, and I am really looking forward to it. So thank you both for joining me and thanks everyone for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye, everybody.